get my six. <sighs> Didn't expect me to come at you from that angle, did you? Doing things differently around here in OMG, isn't it great? First of all, big shout out to Erie. How about her volunteering her time as she has uh, to free up mine so we can get back to doing the things we enjoy, which soon is in like super soon means getting back out here deeper into the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch forest to look for him, her, it, or they. The world's hide and seek champion. Okay, very soon. While continuing to tell your awesome stories, got several coming at you today. Uh, cryptids, another UFO story. Um, really odd cryptids. Cryptids. Um, but speaking of Aries, she reached out and kind of made an introduction of herself on the community part of this channel uh, I'm gonna copy and paste what she said and pin it to the bottom of this video I would like it if those of you who enjoy the channel enjoy the content could thank her welcome her to the team already there's been such a weight lifted off my back just from knowing I now have more time to spend doing the things that I want to do more which means bringing you more of these stories now that I have time to do that because I'm not doing so much administrative stuff actually none at all so uh, I'm going to kick it old school a little bit today and before I share these four really awesome stories sent in by viewers uh, and and you'll remember a lot of you came here years back when I used to do this thing called morning ramble when I would share experiences I've had with life where I've kind of learned some life lessons and I want to share one quickly because I was reminded of it yesterday when I made the video where I showed um, some of the woodworking projects I'm doing which are available on Etsy the links in the description box below as are the books and everything and Dearly's Peanuts. I think we only have like six packs left. Better get them before somebody else does. Um, but it's about time management because I mentioned in that video when I was showing all the things I got done by noon. Uh, so I was able to go and continue to edit the stories in October Nights Part 2, which I was up until 1 a.m. last night doing, which now that Erie's here, I don't expect I'll be up past 9 or 10 doing. Thank you, Erie. Um, <laughs> Time management is so key, and if you use it properly and you use it correctly, you can get so much done uh, before most people even start their day. Uh, I mentioned in that video that I started at 8 and I was done by noon. What I didn't mention was that I was up by 5. I'd already run 5 miles. I'd already edited two stories in the upcoming collection, October 9th, Part 2. Decided to take a break from that to let my brain and my eyes kind of focus on something else, did the woodworking projects, got all that done by noon. So here's my story. This is how I learned this. I have not always done this. Listen, and, and Travis Daigle over at um, Fighting Past 40, he and I discussed this last time we talked about how frustrating it can be when people say, oh, I wish I could do whatever fill in the blank like you do. Listen, it's not about wishing, it's about doing. If you did the things that productive people did, you would be able to be productive as well. One of the things that frustrates me is, you know, I've had people my whole life say, I wish I had your energy so I could multitask and do all these things you do. Listen, if you got out and exercised daily, and if you ate a healthy diet daily, if you got proper sleep, and that's a weakness for me, I need to work, be better, that's, that's a, I need, I need to do that better, okay? You would have my energy and you could do these things. Listen, when you talk to a successful person, somebody who's where you want to be and you say, oh, if I had this like you, I could, I, 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 or if, if, if only, I, you know, you're making excuses and that person might go, uh-huh, yeah, mm-hmm. But in their head, they're thinking, then do it. Stop being a loser and do it. Listen, here's the life story. Uh, it's a tale of two businessmen. I shared in a video last week that not enough of you really watched about um, my early days as a stockbroker. I was right out of college, first generation college student from over in Appalachistan, came back to the motherland of Virginia, Charlottesville, uh, became a stockbroker, and this is the late 90s, and I, man, I thought I'd arrived. I thought I'd arrived. I got my college degree. Um, I got a job where I actually got to wear a tie and some wingtips. I wasn't stacking lumber, digging coal. Nothing that there's, not that there's anything wrong with those professions. That's just not what I wanted. Um, but I sucked. I was not hitting my production numbers. I was not making the, the revenues that was expected of me to make. And I was flirting dangerously close to losing my job. And the firm I worked for sent me out to their home office 
and I spent a week out there taking a class called Acceleration. I talked about how uh, in the last video about how I would waste my time doing menial tasks such as changing the oil in my own car thinking I was a wise guy because I was saving 10 bucks. Not realizing what I was doing was stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. Because if I paid Valvoline the twenty four ninety nine or whatever to change my oil, and I called my customers and my clients and tried to sell tax-free municipal bonds while they were changing oil, and I did that, and the first morning I did that, I made more money in commissions than I paid to buy that old Chevy Blazer that I bought my last year of college. Here's another thing that I learned, and I'm going to share this with you here because this has to do with time management. Uh, the guy's trainer said, what time do you get to work? And I was like, well, I get to work by nine. And he said, nine, why do you get to work at nine? And I said, well, because the stock market doesn't open on 930, so I'm 30 minutes early. And he goes, you know, uh, he says, I've made more money daily than you made last month by 10 a.m. And he showed me the numbers, and he was right. And he said, look, you're, you're, you're missing out on some of the most valuable, precious hours of the day, and that is the wee hours of the day. This is when the serious business people who were serious about their businesses and who are seriously successful are out and about, and that's when you need to go talking to them. I'm like, how? He goes, you start making your first cold call at 7 a.m. Go to the industrial parks, go to the business sectors, go door to door, find who's in there at 7 a.m., talk to them, tell them who you are, see if they want your help. So I did that. And uh, one of the guy that told me this became kind of a mentor for me and worked with me. He was from southwestern Virginia, down there, part of Appalachia, just a couple years younger than me, highly successful guy because he had drive, he had ambition, uh, he had discipline. He used his time wisely. So I called him after a couple of days of this. His name was Herschel. I said, Herschel, uh, I'm going. To, I'm making these business calls at 7 a.m. and I'm out there for an hour and I'm only meeting like two or three people. I've, I'm knocking on doors of like 30 businesses and the people aren't there. What do I do? Go back and see them later at like 9 or 10 when they show up? And he goes, no, do not go back and waste your time seeing those people. I said, look, anybody who's in business who isn't at their business at 7 a.m. is not there because they're at home trying to figure out a different business to be in because that's not the one for them. I thought, ah, this guy, he, that, he's just like one of these alpha males, one of these narcissistic, arrogant guys who likes to hear his own voice. I didn't believe him. So here's what I did. Uh, I went back and actually started talking to one of those guys that was never there at 7, but was always there around 10 a.m. I'm not going to say his name. This is a real person, real business, and I'm going to compare him, however, to another guy that was just a little bit down the road there that I did meet at 7 a.m. I'm going to tell you about the guy I met at 7 a.m. first. Walk into his office. He's in his uh, early 60s at the time. I was in my late 20s. And uh, he's, he looks up. He's in the back office, in his office back behind his gatekeeper's office. He looks up. He goes, can I help you? I said, yeah. Uh, I came by to introduce myself. Told him my name. Told him what I did. You know, I'm an investment guy. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds. And I wanted to stop by and, and see if there's anything I can do to help you. He goes, how long have you been doing it? I said, uh, about five or six months. He goes, okay. He goes, uh, go put a tick on your calendar for a year from today. He says, if you're still in business for, for a year, if you're here one year from today, come back and see me and I'll do business with you. And I was offended. My feelings were hurt. I thought, what an arrogant, you know, bad guy. Uh, and I said, okay. And I kind of slunk out of the office, slinked out of the office, however you'd say the word. Um, the other guy. This was a couple of weeks later. I happened to be out for lunch, and I noticed that he was in his office, and it was one of those places I'd stopped by se several times. He was never in. So I stopped by after I'd had my lunch. Hi, this is who I am. This is what I do. I've stopped by to see you in the mornings, and you're never here, so I thought I'd stop by and see you now as I'm on my way back from lunch. Completely different experience. Wonderful guy. Nice, 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 nice. Okay? He said, oh, you know, yeah, I, I never come to work before 10. He says, I enjoy my mornings. I, you know, I get, I get up when my body just naturally wakes up. I enjoy my coffee. I watch headline news or whatever. Have a seat. Let's talk. Uh, spend an hour with him. I left. I thought, man, this is great. And he told me when I left, he said, come by and see me anytime. My door is always welcome to you. Well, guess what? I did. More times than I should have until eventually his door was not open to me or anybody else because he wasn't there anymore. And I just thought, well, he must have moved, right? Maybe he moved his office, just never told me. And he had never done business with me. He had never invested any money with me. Um, so more than a year goes by, and I was kind of in a bad mood. I was in a foul mood. Uh, things had gotten much better, but I was still kind of struggling. 
I went by that guy's office who told me to come see him in a year if I was still in business. And I thought, you know what? I'm still here. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to be as mean to him as he was to me. I'm just going to be arrogant to him too. So I go in the office and it wasn't early. It was midday. I was probably coming back from lunch. Um, his secretary's there. She says, can I help you? And I said, well, I was just stopping by to see uh, so-and-so back there. I said, I stopped by about a year ago to introduce myself. I'm a, I'm a financial planner. And I, he told me that if I was still in business in a year to come see me to do business with me. He popped his head around the corner. He says, you're still here? I said, yeah. And he goes, okay, come on in. He says, I've got an appointment in Richmond and I've got to rush, but come in here real quick. And I'm like, this is weird. What's this? So I go in. He goes, sit down, sit down. And uh, he pulls out a business card and he turns it over and he starts writing on the back. He's like, I've got to rush, but I will spend time with you. I told you I would. I'm a man of my word. And he hands me my, his card. And I look on the back, and what he had written down was his bunch of numbers. And I'm like, what's this? Because I'm thinking phone numbers on the front. And he goes, well, that's my social security number. You'll need that to open my account, right? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? He goes, okay, okay, hold on. He goes, my address and phone number's on the front. Just use my business address. He opens up another book. This is like 1999-ish. Pulls out a checkbook. And he starts doing this and he hands me a check and I get it and it's for $50,000. And I'm like, what's this? He goes, you do muni bonds, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, I want your best rate on a bond that's, you know, uh, triple B or above. It doesn't have to be insured because I don't care about that crap. I'm not scared. He goes, but I don't buy accrued interest. So if there's accrued interest on it, just send me, just sell me 45 bonds and just put the cash in the money market. This man knew his shit. You know why? He was a serious businessman. He was a serious investor. He did come and meet with me later, and he invested a butt ton of money with me. And he explained to me what Herschel, my mentor, was trying to explain to me. He said, listen, he says, I appreciate, it, appreciate you coming by that morning. He says, but I am where I am because I value my time. I've learned not to waste it, and I don't let others waste it as well. Now, the other guy, I ended up running into him again three years later later. This is how. I took my car to the dealership where I'd purchased it. This was, again, close to 20 years ago. It needed repairs. Well, 17 or 18 years ago, close to 20. This guy was driving the shuttle. So I dropped my car off. He took me back to my office in the shuttle. I said, oh my gosh, there you are. I remember you. He goes, you do? I said, yeah, you used to have, and I named his business. He goes, oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you look familiar. Didn't even remember me. I mean, that's how seriously he was taking me. He was taking me as seriously as he took everything else in his life. I'm like, what happened? Why aren't you there? And he goes, ah, you know, well, you know, just every excuse under the sun. Blame the fact that a certain person from a certain political party had come into office. Blamed laws Congress had passed. I was still in business, and my business was prospering because I was picking up proper business habit, habits from my mentor and from other successful business people. The other guy was still in business. His business was still prospering. Listen, this, the point is we either choose to use our time effectively or we don't. We either choose activities that carry us forward closer toward where we want to be or we don't. Now, if you're in business, or if you want to be in business, or if you're an independent contractor, you're in sales, and you're not out there beating the bushes early, it's just a matter of time before instead of you working for yourself, for your business, to make yourself wealthy, you're going to be working for someone else in their business to make them wealthy. So choose wisely how it is you use your time, uh, and when you start get up and get at them get out there hey the benefit is you get your chores done as we'd say here in the homesteading world and i know we don't homestead on this channel we do all kinds of other weird stuff you get a knock off early me personally i like to take a nap every afternoon get rested up and get up and hit it hard again but the choice is yours the choice is absolutely yours okay now there's our old school throwback morning ramble type stuff let's get to some stories okay this is a story about cryptids, and please make sure you're getting my six back here. You never know who or what may or may not show up. Story about cryptids. <sighs> Heard something and saw movement. It was a leaf falling out of the tree. That's how creepy some of these stories are. The sender of this story wishes to remain anonymous, so they will. They write, not all cryptids are horrifying. Some are merely annoying and startling. 
So yeah, we live with these things. I haven't seen them around lately, but you can hear them rolling around just out of sight or skittering off into the dark, occasionally knocking things over. How do I know they aren't mice? The mice get caught in our tin cat traps. These things don't. Plus, I've seen them many times. They are small, somewhere between the size of a golf ball and a tennis ball. They have black shaggy fur and shiny black eyes with insectoid type legs and mouthful of rows upon rows of sharp white triangular teeth. Don't worry, none of them have ever tried to bite us. These things can skitter on their little bug-like legs or they can roll by flattening their legs against their bodies. Rollies. They seem to like dark places to hide in and will roll between their favorite spots. They obviously can't see while doing so, which led to all our ankles being bumped into on occasion because obviously they have the right of way while rolling. Not like it's our house or anything. The funny thing was that if they felt like you were in their way, they were not the least bit afraid to tell you by fussing at you in gravelly voices in some language we couldn't understand. This led to some funny arguments with the Rollies from time to time. One of my children was getting ready for bed one night and here comes this Rolly rolling along, growling to itself as it did. They watched it for a moment, my kids I guess she means, or he means, then went back to fixing the covers and they got bumped into, kinda hard actually, then fussed at, and so they just threw their arms up and fussed back. Well, okay then buddy, sorry to be in your way there pal. I couldn't keep from laughing. The small rollies weren't all that bad and weren't even all that startling once you got used to them. The bigger ones on the ground or the bigger ones, on the other hand, were always startling, intentionally so. These were only slightly smaller than a basketball. Most were black, one was silver gray, and instead of solid black eyes, that one had pale blue or blue gray eyes. They were fond of dark places too, but instead of hiding, they would wait for you to walk by and pop up and growl, yell at you intentionally, scare the crap out of you, waving their arms at you, and laughing mockingly at you when you screamed or yelped in surprise. Or sometimes they would hide in a dark room behind some stuff and pop out to scare you just as you turned the light on and had only just taken a step or two in. Then of course the little butthead would roll away laughing all the while to leave you clutching your chest trying to breathe. The one in our bedroom was pretty bad, but the one in our bathroom was the worst. He was the silver gray one and the only one to answer a question that I know of. He popped up and scared the dickens out of me several times in a row just that week. Ack! Oh my God, buddy, why do you keep doing this to me? Don't you realize that's scary? I gasped. That's why, he said in a low gravelly voice. Huh? Why? What? I asked, startled. I hadn't really expected an answer and didn't even know they could speak English until right then. Is why I do, it's why I do it to scare you, he grinned. His rows of sharp teeth apparent. Why? What on earth did I do to you, I asked. Have I mentioned that when I get scared, sometimes my curiosity or anger makes me forget to be as afraid as I should be? Well, it does. Nothing. Still very funny, though, it said. Since you're talking to me, may I know your name? I asked. No, he said, wobbling back and forth on his feet. No, you don't have a name, I asked. Uh, he says I could not pronounce it. He spoke in staggered, broken English, kind of like Stitch, then rolled off. I'm assuming Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Uh, one day we heard a mouse skittering around in the attic. It happens. Then we heard the distinctive roll, roll, roll of a rolly by the sound of a big one. Then we heard the mouse squeaking and squealing, followed by growling in silence. My youngest heard this too, and we just stared at each other and then the ceiling as we listened to it roll away. Slower this time. My youngest asked in their sweet, chirpy voice, Mama, did that Rolly just kill a mouse? Yeah, baby, it seems so, I replied. Like I said earlier, they never tried to bite us. I didn't say that they don't eat. Whew. That's creepy. I sure wouldn't want to be a howl or a mouse living in that house. And with uh, strange cryptids like that, who needs a house cat anyway, you know? All right. Let's get on to another one here. Um, this one's about shadow people. Very creepy. Once again, the sender has asked to be left anonymous. And again, we do have an email channel, 
or an email address on the channel now. Go to the About section. Submit your story if you'd like. Uh, Erie will get them, and she gets all stories to me, okay? And she gets your well wishes. Um, all the, She just thins out she, stuff I don't want to see or she knows. Uh, the vertically challenged individuals who live under bridges, I don't get that stuff. So I have more time to do the things I enjoy, which is, fingers crossed, potentially bringing you more videos with more stories, okay? Um, but yeah, submit your stories. If you don't, if you want your name used, you want credit for your story, we'll do that. If you want to remain anonymous, we'll keep you anonymous. Uh, we've had shadows move around in weird ways for a long time now. Not like the shadow people of Reddit or other channels. Those are like 3D and solid like people. Ours can look like practically anything. Sometimes a small dot, a little bigger than a golf ball, that slides across the floor and runs into a door and phasing into it. Sometimes they look like a small person, but flat, and it runs along the floor only to be upright on a wall or door and then disappear. Sometimes you'll just see a dark shape slide quickly across the ground only to merge with your own shadow or a friend's or a pet's to make that shadow wave or gesture in a way the owner of the shadow isn't moving. It's creepy. Kind of, I mean, this is me chiming in here. Kind of sounds like demonic activity a little bit. Mine waved at me. I hadn't moved my hand. One of these made my cat's shadow wave at me like a person. Another made my cat's shadow dance in a spot my cat had just jumped down from. Like my cat jumped down off the banister, but its shadow remained, stood on its hind legs, and did human dance moves. Wow. We've seen small people like shadows leaping up and down, flapping their arms. We saw one, one one day that looked like a small version of carpet from Aladdin. No, seriously, and it was far creepier than you'd think. We were inside when we saw this shape floating, outside, shadowed against the curtain. It hovered, rotated, flapped, and paused. Then it wobbled, just like carpet, then flew up and over the house. Then, zoom, it was gone. I have no idea uh, what that was about. These can happen day or night, inside the house or outside. The scariest, creepiest one was when I saw one whoosh across the ground to change forms from something like a huge bird to something demon-like and attach itself to someone's car. I looked, Mr. Lake. There was nothing above me to cause that shadow, just blue sky. Also, the shadow waved a clawed hand at me as the car drove by. They aren't always that creepy, though. It does make you jump when they follow you too close, then slink away behind a tree to wave at you or just run off and fade away, leaving you with no shadow. Wow. That's creepy. Like, again, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like demons. Uh, maybe, obviously, you're living on a haunted property or in a haunted house. We have seen similar things here on occasion. Great story. Thanks for sending it. All right, here comes one uh, about something similar that the writer, again, wants to remain anonymous, calls bog bunnies. And there's a reference to the uh, pumpkin munchers in here, which was a story from October Nights Part 1, if you'll remember if you've read that. Obviously, this sender has. Um, we've still got maybe 20 copies of Volume 1 available in print that we can send out autographed. They're in our Etsy store as well. The link's in the description box. Just below the video where it says more dot dot dot, click on those dots. It'll pull up those links. This is related to your story of the pumpkin munchers. Also, I stole the name Bog Bunnies from Craig Ferguson. They also seem to be related to Stitch or the Bell Witch Beast. I don't know who that person is. Um, I know Stitch, but I don't know the Bell Witch Beast. These cute little things are small, black, have long fur, bunny ears, shiny black slanted eyes, large for their heads, four legs ending in long claws, and they have a short tail. Also, they have low gravelly voices. Yes, they can talk. I'm not sure how we were lucky enough to find ourselves hosting one of these stitch-like critters, but I'd like to have another as a pet someday. The one we had might have just rolled or followed us in on in one day. It was shy and liked to hide under the beds or the couch. It would also do the E.T. thing and hide among the stuffed animals in the toy box. Sometimes it or they would play hide and seek or tag with my younger children. Or kind of a weird cross between the two. It would occasionally do creepy things like cling to a wall and watch you while you slept only to skitter around once you noticed it was there. 
or, or if you moved much. We didn't have any conversations, but from what I gathered from ours and from descriptions of the Bell Witch Beast, these guys crash land here and don't want anything other than freedom. Ours said that they were made to be miners, like for minerals, genetically created to be smart, strong, uh, and smart. Really, did Disney find one? They needed to be small to fit in the mine shaft, strong enough to dig the minerals, and smart enough to follow orders. Being cute and able to walk may have just been offshoots of gene genetic tampering. The Bell Witch Beast tells of how a ball of fire, a UFO, crashed into an outhouse or shed. Then when the people went to investigate, they found a small creature like a cross between a small dog and a rabbit with black shaggy fur, and it could talk. They assumed it to be bewitched or part of the haunting nah they just found stitch long before lilo did i just want to say to people who find one please be kind to it they are not bad they can be friends so sounds like this person's experienced something along the lines of like a cryptid slash alien speaking of which final story for the day i know we're closing in on half an hour here final story for this video of the day hopefully fingers crossed um, this sender said I can use their first name. They want me to withhold the last name. No problem. No problem. Uh, this is a story my brother told me. Back around 1965 or 1966, my brother was attending our local community college. He had a friend who drove in from a town to the west of us to attend classes. This was in West Texas. One day, right before class started, his friend came in, but was as white as a ghost and trembling with fear. My brother tried to get him to tell him what in the world had happened, but class was starting. After class had ended, he cornered his friend, who was still visibly shaken, but took my brother aside and told him the following. He said he was driving the highway into town like normal, before an early morning class when his car started acting up. He said he saw a huge, weird-looking craft above him and saw a very bright light, then his car died completely. He said the craft hovered for a few seconds, then shot straight up in the air, then disappeared. Then his car started back up, and as shaken as he was, he drove into class. My brother said the way his classmate looked and was so fearful, he had no reason to believe he made it up. It's up to you, of course, if you want to use this. Just use my first name if you would. Catherine. As you can tell, Catherine, absolutely, I chose to use it. That was a great story. And I'm going to share one of my personal experiences along those lines with, with you folks watching that I'd not thought of in many years until I read Catherine's story. So, Catherine, many thanks for sending it. I'm going to tell you exactly where and when this happened. It was in Aberdeen County, Washington, out in Washington State, in between the small town of Hoquiam, which is right across the bridge from the city of Aberdeen, en route to Ocean Shores, out on the, the beach in the coast. Um, this would have been... Let's see, I was in Iraq from 08 to 09 with the Washington Army National Guard. So this would have been in 2008 before I deployed, which was summer. So the spring of 2008, uh, I was staying at a motel slash hotel out in Ocean Shores. And I had been to Hoquiam to actually watch a movie with uh, a, a lady I'd met. Had a couple dates, never advanced past that. Um, but I was on my way back to where I was staying, and there's this long stretch, like 17 miles of nothingness. I had a very good truck. It was a, uh, I think it was a 1998 Dodge Dakota four-wheel drive that I bought off of the original owner here in Charlottesville before moving out to the West Coast. Garage kept, it looked brand new, even though it had mile, high mileage on it when I bought it. Uh, Never had any mechanical problems. I'd used that truck for my Homeless Across America round trip, and I'd gone back and forth across the country a couple times. Never had a problem with it. So I'm driving down the road, and just from out of nowhere, everything on the, it just died. The engine stopped, the lights on the dash went out, and I just started rolling down the road and as I started to slow down, I veered off to the right. There's a very wide berm there, so it was easy to get over and get out of the road. And my first thought was, oh, crap, I'm stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I think I had a flip phone, probably didn't have service out there. 
So I just took the key and I turned it back to turn the ignition off. And I thought, man, what am I going to do? I'm starting to think of what I'm going to do. Then I thought, well, why don't you just try to start the truck? So I started it, started right up with no hiccups, no problems whatsoever. Was able to drive back out to Ocean Shores. Uh, kept that truck up until the time I deployed uh, three or four months later. Never had a problem with it again past that point. So the entire time I owned that truck, that's the only time anything like that ever happened. Now, believe it or not, up until that time, I'd never seen a single episode of The X-Files. I know, right? And now I do this kind of stuff for a living? Well, this is one of the reasons why. When I was in Iraq, I was able to purchase all, like, up until then, it was like nine seasons of The X-Files on DVDs and watch on my laptop with what little downtime we had um, from the from the uh, local vendors there for like 10 bucks. It was all black market stuff, but they were on, on base. So I was like, well, I heard this is a good show, I'll watch it. It's only then that I learned through that show that that's a common phenomena associated with UFOs passing over your vehicle. When I saw that in the X-Files, I immediately thought back to when that happened to me in my truck, as I did when I got Catherine's story here. Again, Catherine, thank you so much for sending that. Now, it's just creepy. One of those experiences that can't be explained through logic or rationale. So if you have an experience like that, whether it has to do with UFOs, aliens, cryptids like Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Loch Ness Monster, Skinwalkers, anything paranormal, supernatural, or spiritual, send it into the channel. You can find our email address uh, on the About section of the page. Again, my new administrator, Erie, will make sure I get your story. If you want your name used, let us know. Uh, if you want to remain anonymous, let us know as well. And also... If you would not mind potentially seeing your story in an upcoming book at some point, give us permission in writing to do that. Okay? See you next time for more.